In October 2011, Grand Canyon University held the inaugural run to fight children's cancer. The event featured a 10K run, a 5K run and walk, and a quarter mile survivor's walk around GCU's main campus in Phoenix. The university partnered with local charities, Children's Cancer Network, and the Phoenix Children's Hospital, donating all proceeds to benefit cancer treatment research. GCU has held four runs, including one in San Diego, and raised nearly $200,000. GCU will hold the 2014 run this March under the guidance of GCU race director Susie Morales. A lot of people don't know that it actually takes months to plan uh, the run to fight children's cancer. I mean, we start six months in advance, and you have to, you know, get all the logistical stuff done. Then you have to get all the ordering. You know, we have 3,000 shirts and bags and shoelaces and bibs and all this stuff that we need to get ready for the run. We have to make sure our vendor area set up and our post-race festival which is always you know the fun part of the race and so it takes a lot of work to actually put this event on and we have a you know a team of people doing it so it takes a small village to put on this great event. The run supports childhood cancer by giving to our beneficiaries which are the Phoenix Children's Hospital and the Children's Cancer Network. Um, the Phoenix Children's Hospital has the Center for Cancer and Blood Disorders which provides a bunch of services for families that are experiencing um, the cancer journey. So they have services like counseling or outreach or um, different nursing and physician services. So they offer you know, a lot of the treatment and a lot of the resources so families can really understand what their child is going through. And the Children's Cancer Network has um, programs like scholarships, gas cards, admission bags. So they both cater to the families and serve the different needs. Each year, GCU selects a local child battling cancer as the honorary race starter. The race starter serves as the face of the event and signals the start of the 5K and 10K and leads the way for the survivor's walk. Past race starters include six-year-old inaugural race starter Olivia Baumgarter, eight-year-old Grace Kostick, and last year's starter, 10-year-old Cooper Goki. Jack Welch, a six-year-old from Chandler, was selected as the 2014 race starter. Jack was diagnosed with T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia, the most common form of childhood cancer at the age of four. He wasn't eating, he wasn't playing, he would just randomly fall asleep on the couch. He was four, and he was a pretty active boy, so we just kind of thought these were symptomatics of maybe a four-year-old who's a growing pains or something explainable normal. He was really pale, his legs were covered in bruises, so we took him back to the doctor, they rushed labs, and within you know six or seven hours, they called us back and said, um, his counts don't look good, his lab results don't look right, um, we need you to come down to the office and we need you to pack a bag because he will be going immediately from our office to Phoenix Children's Hospital where he will be staying from anywhere to one to two weeks. And they wouldn't give us any more information on the phone, it was horrible. We got in the car, we drove to the office and they pretty quickly told us that they were pretty sure it was leukemia. And thus began our journey with leukemia and we went straight to Phoenix Children's and we really haven't looked back since. So he started treatment that night. They started with red blood cells and um, different things to kind of build up his system and then he had a port put in the next day with surgery. That's when they started his chemo and his regimen and it was a pretty horrible journey to start. The first 30 days were absolutely horrible. Treatment almost daily. We were at the Phoenix Children's Hospital Clinic almost daily and it was just a lot of stuff to deal with at first. And then gradually after six months, it got a little bit easier and now we're just really focusing on normalcy, trying to let him be a boy, playing baseball, playing basketball, going to school, doing homework, playing with friends. That's what we focus on. Since the second run, GCU provided each participant currently battling cancer with gold superhero capes to serve as cancer-fighting superheroes. Gold is the color of childhood cancer. Similarly, the Welches wanted to create an imaginative approach to portray Jack's crusade. They created Team Jack Strikes Back, a playoff of Star Wars, Jack's favorite movie. Beth created a blog following Jack's treatment, and the family created Star Wars-themed shirts to show their support. We went ahead and started kind of like a blog, a Care Pages blog, and we wanted to have a cool intro, so actually my husband is the one who came up with Team Jack Strikes Back. And the very first entry into that Care Pages talks about how Jack is battling the dark side, and he's a Jedi, and he's using his Jedi powers and to, to fight cancer. 
I think Jack is an amazing fighter. I don't know that he knows he has another option, which is maybe better. Even if he's scared or nervous about different things, he knows that in order for him to recover from leukemia, it's just part of what he has to do. And, and I kind of admire that. He doesn't question us when we tell him, this is what you need to take, this is what you need to do. I mean, he doesn't like it necessarily, but, but he's very good about that. And I think a lot of grown-ups and a lot of, um, a lot of people, cancer patients and other kinds of, of incidents can learn from that and just, you know what, you just got to go in fighting and know this is what we're going to do, here's the plan and, and we're going to make the best of it. And I think he really does do that. Jack is currently in the last stage of treatment. He visits a pediatric hospital in Chandler once a month to receive a chemo drip and spinal tap. He also takes a handful of prescribed medication. Jack has become comfortable at the hospital. He knows most of the staff by name and often administers the chemo himself. He plans to complete treatment in January 2015. We are currently at the Phoenix Children's Hospital East Valley Clinic. And the first time we came here, uh, it was really scary because this is different than the hospital. It's much more low key, it's much more uh, laid back, it's much more personal. Um, they really do get to know you here and they take the time to get to know you. The unknown is really scary to me. Even him not having to be on meds, how, as wonderful as that sounds, it's really scary because the chemo is what's keeping any of that cancer at bay right now. Or so we think. Maybe his body isn't producing anymore and the chemo's there kind of as a backup, but maybe it is still producing and the chemo's killing it as quickly as it's building. So that's scary. It's scary to think about. Grand Canyon University held the 2014 Run to Fight Children's Cancer on March 8th. A record number of more than 3,000 runners and walkers attended the event. To date, GCU has raised nearly $300,000 for charities from the past five runs. GCU plans to hold the fifth Run to Fight Children's Cancer on March 7th, 2015. I think what makes our run different and successful is that we really want to focus on the kids that we're serving. We make a very big deal in making them prominent and you know the stars of our event and that starts with giving them the capes and that helps us identify who in our event is the um, cancer survivor. So it's, it's a very family friendly environment where we're all here just to help those kids. Eventually we would like to be out of business because that would mean that we have you know raised enough funds to fund enough research for cancer you know for there to be a cure for cancer. So Although we really enjoy putting on this event and a lot of people, you know, are happy to be part of it, the ultimate goal is to find a cure for childhood cancer. So today was the fourth edition of the Run to Fight Children's Cancer in Phoenix. We were here since 3.30 in the morning. We had volunteers helping with event setup. We had the whole field set up. We had all the water stations along the route. We had all the volunteers in place. Everyone was ready and excited. It's been months and months leading up to this, so it's finally the day. Everything could not have ran smoother. We were so excited of how everything went. The Survivor's Walk was once again the focal point of the event, and it was just a blast. We had the 5K, and it felt like five minutes, and people were still walking and walking, walking through the start line. So it was a sea of people, which is the greatest, uh, I think, stamp of approval on our event, that we are making an impact in the community and that in that this is an event that people want and look forward to every year. Jack was awesome. It's such a young age that you're asking them to be the, the star and they just handle it with such grace. Jack was a trooper about it. He got up on the scissor lift, he blew the horn for all three races and he was just absolutely awesome. Planning an event of this magnitude takes months and months of planning. This is not a one-man band. So after all this, you know, planning and planning and today you finally see all your hard work pay off. It's just the greatest reward to me and I know to everyone that has had a hand in putting this event on because it was truly a success today. Thank <laughs> you.